And we are live. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and start the uh, Board of Adjust Equalization and Review at, for Thursday, May 20th. Uh, the first thing is the consent agenda, items one through four. Do I have a motion uh, from the board on items one through four? I move we accept the items one through four. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Yeah. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next thing we have is a deferral application denial uh, for Timothy Clark. Uh, Daryl Hicks, uh, do you know if, if Mr. Clark is going to show up? Um, I do not think he is. No, we didn't send a, a letter for him. No, he's not going to, okay. Yeah. All, all right. Well, let me get you sworn in then. Uh, sure. if you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. State your name and position with the county, please. Daryl Hicks, uh, Tax Division Supervisor for Delinquent Collections. Okay. All right. So what do you have for us on this one? Okay. Um, Mr. Clark um, had submitted a late application for the long-term um, payment plan deferral program. That is a new program that came into effect in 2020. Um, it's, it's a program that kind of mirrors the circuit breaker. However, there are no age requirements and the income limits uh, may be a little different. Um, it's designed to um, help out um, long-term homeowners um, that may not qualify for any of the other exemption programs. Um, after reviewing the application, um, which was submitted late and usually, you know, it's due by June 1st. However, um, he did not submit it until, and we did not receive it until April the 21st, 2021. Um, after reviewing his application, his income, everything, he does qualify. The only issue with his application is it was untimely. Um, I, I think that, um, he was very sincere in, in his um, talks with me that he, um, you know, needed to be on this program to be able to afford his taxes. And this program is, um, he would pay for 2020 uh, no more than 4% of his income in property tax. And the remaining amount would be deferred for 10 years. And he could pay at any time during that time. However, if he chose um, the 10 years and we would contact him, he would have to pay that within, um, I think it's either 30 or 60 days. Okay, so say that again, it's 10, you've got 10 years to pay it? Right, um, it's a local program that was developed um, in office. Um, and instead of a state um, type of exemption program, this is a local program that's offered by Durham County Tax Office. Um, so it's, um, his income, he would only pay 4% of whatever his uh, yearly income is, which is um, pretty low. Um, and he does qualify below the one person uh, limit of $19,100. Um, but he would pay no more than 4% of And the remaining rain, remaining balance would be due within 10 years. It's basically a payment plan developed type deferral program within the tax office. And if he sold the property, I guess it would all come due. Right. It would be collected at closing. And, and, and why are we hearing this? Did he appeal it? Um, he did appeal um, because of the untimeliness of it. Um, it was due basically... June, the application would be by June 1st. However, he did not submit the application and we did not receive it until April the 21st, 2021. Okay. Well, I know in the past on similar type of things, we have you know, usually uh, accepted it as timely. I, I don't know what the rest of the board feels, but I got a question. Met all the other requirements. I had a question, Dave. So, yes. so the, ap the application was 10 months late and if, if if we if we did not does does he he has the opportunity to apply again next year? Um, he would. He has an opportunity to apply for twenty twenty one taxes. 
Um, that is by June the 1st. Um, however, you know, if he doesn't submit it by June 1st, he would be able to, you know, submit the application and appeal it for untimeliness again. However, um, you know, in my conversations with him, and I know this is really not a factor, um, you know, he, he sees no other alternative um, to paying the taxes for 2020 right now, except for the smaller 4% amount of whatever his income is. Um, I know that really doesn't factor into the decision. He, he was late and that's what he is appealing. Um, but he, he, um, but he, he qualifies for the program um, as stated for 2020 um, with no problems outside of that other, other than being untimely. Does he have to appeal every year? Um, if he does not um, file by June 1st, he would. Now, if he submits another application and re we receive it in the office by June the 1st this year for 2021, then he would not have to appeal. But if he submits it after June 1st, um, then he would have to appeal again for the untimeliness. No, no, but I mean, in the program, once once he's accepted, does he have to apply? Oh, every yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he would have to apply, um, basically provide his income again each year. So it is a requalification for each year. Okay. And how do people find out about this program? I mean, it's um, we have the application um, on our website. We also have some information um, in our frequently asked questions, um, there was actually, I think, um, some press release done or something back when the program was initiated. Okay. So, so if, if, if we deny him, just, just hypothetically, if we deny him, then June 1st is in two or three weeks. Right. He can basically reapply, correct? That is correct. And, and then that, and then that moving forward. Yeah, he can, he can apply now for 2021, he cannot go back. It would not be retroactive um, unless we, for 2020, unless we approve the application for 2020 as being untimely and, and the appeal was granted. So he'd have to pay the full amount for 2020. Yeah, if he was not, if he, uh, if he was not um, approved, he would have to pay the full amount immediately. Um, if he's approved for the program, he would pay 4% of his income on the taxes now and the remainder would be deferred for 10 years. Now he could pay any time during that 10 years, mm -hmm. but at the 10 years, he would have to, um, we would give him a notice that he would have to pay immediately. Um, and then he would have to pay then. Did he, did he provide any, any reason why he was 10 months, 10 months late? Are you just found out about? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, I know he had had contact with our office in December um, I'm not sure why he was so late doing it because I had several conversations with him uh, between January and uh, March. And he told me, kept telling me the whole time he was submitting an application, but we never received it until April. Okay. Jeanette, you're, you're muted. What do you say, Dave? Okay, um, on the Durham County tax records, it says Marie B. Clark is the owner. Has that? Has that was that his. That's that is his mother. Okay. Um, she passed away, and the property was willed to him, but it has not been uh, recorded in his name. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, he is the only heir to the property. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Well, what's the pleasure of the board? Any other discussion about this? And then I'll entertain a motion regarding this property. I mean, it is similar to what we we've, we've allowed before, but it is ten months. It's a long yeah. time. So, well, and I guess he was in conversation with uh, Dwayne, but didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I mean, I, I'm kind of like you know. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, like he said, I think Dwayne said he he doesn't have the money to pay it anyway, so he's only going to pay what he can pay. So does it really matter? <laughs> <laughs> well, the county might foreclose on him. Well. Exactly. <laughs> you're two weeks, you, you, you're two weeks from, from, from the deadline for next year. I reckon you can wrap. I don't know if you can wrap all that under the same umbrella, but maybe you can. I don't know. I, 
Uh, okay, I, I'll make. So, what is the what is the what is the the city doing? I mean, they are uh, they they want us to, to, to they deny it, correct? Well, the, uh, the county denied it. Okay. I mean, the I'm county sorry, takes county. application. Yeah, but um, yeah, we denied it because it was um okay. late. Okay. And then he filled out an appeal form for the untimeliness, asking us to approve it. Okay, you see, you asked for a motion, Dave. I, I move that we we uphold the county's position. That's that's a motion. Well, well, the can the county can't can't waive it. They have to deny it. Den oh, you're saying they, they deny it? So right, right? They they, yeah. they don't have any choice. They can't override. It. So it wasn't like they made a decision. It's the law. They they have to deny. It. Okay, but we, so we we have the option where we can override it. Yeah, yeah, they, they have to deny it, but we they appeal to us and then we can change it. They can't change it. So, so, we, so the motion would be, okay, well, the motion be if I want to agree with the county, the motion would be that they'll uphold the county's position, correct? No? Yeah, you, you'd be going along with state law, what the yeah, county that, required. That, that's, that's my motion. Okay, all right, do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Uh, raise, raise your hand if you... All those opposed, I, I'm opposed. I feel sorry for the guy. So it passes three to one. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is number six, an exemption denial for Lynn Haven Apartments. <clears throat> Amanda, are you here? I'm here. You raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, sir, I do. State your name and position, please. Amanda Markle, and I'm deputy assessor over personal property. Um, and for this one, I believe we do have someone that might be showing up. That, that was my next question. So who would that be? I forgot his name. Hang on one second. Is anybody here from Lynn Haven Apartments? Hey, Ted Klumper. Looks like he's connecting to audio. Yeah, he's connected now. It may be him. Yeah, there he is. Uh, Okay, Ted, uh, what's his, what's your last name, sir? And can you unmute? Clumper. Okay, I need to get you sworn in, please, if you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. And are you comfortable using this, this Zoom format for your uh, appeal? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Um, Amanda, I know you wanted to have them go first, but I really think it's easier if you do because it kind of sets the sets things up for us. Yeah, that's okay. fine for the. Yeah, I have no problem going first. Okay. All so, right, so please now. Mm -hmm. um, so for Lynn Haven, um, for this property, it is a late file application for tax year 2021. Um, the listing period is the time that they're supposed to submit the application, which was January. Their application was submitted in March, so we're asking for. Um, approval to accept their untimely application. They do meet all of the qualifications with the exception of the untimeliness for tax year 2021. Okay, well, how do they qualify for an exemption? Uh, this is uh, lower moderate income housing. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, sir, what, what's your, why were you late? Well, we were late because I, I work with the group that started working with the owners of this property. And basically, my understanding is the previous property managers did not submit the form and the application on time. So the property managers of this complex left kind of abruptly, but they left the end of January. So when we came in, we realized this hadn't been filled and we sent in the application. But obviously, at that point, we were behind the eight ball. So, um, so that's what why it's said late. What's your association? Are you are you the property manager? What, what's your association with this property? Well, our association, it, it's owned by the Ezekiel Foundation, and they're a nonprofit out of Lexington, Kentucky. And we are a group that's working with them because they basically, they um, kind of align themselves with some people that weren't acting in their best interest. So we've kind of stepped in to help them and are getting them reacclimated with some property managers that are treating it more like a property and caring about the residents versus just as an asset that they can kind of move in and move out and make some money off of. 
Okay, so sir, uh, but what is your, are you a property manager? Are you an attorney? What what's your what what's your well, so, I mean, so the Ezekiel Foundation is a nonprofit that runs Lynn, that owns Lynn Haven, but they really all they have is they don't have any employees. They just have a board. And so they've brought us on board to kind of work with this property and other ones. So we're I'm, who, I mean, who, I'm who are you? Who do you work for? Who do you work for? I, I mean, a, a company called Propel, Propel Company. And you were hired by Ezekiel to manage the property to to do what to kind of straighten them out on several properties that they were in that they did not even they did not have a great um understanding of what what properties they were involved in and the fact that they had property managers hired that really were not doing their job basically okay all right well i'm not really sure that you have the right to to appeal but that that's kind of beside the point Okay. All, all right. Um, what is the board? Are there any questions from the board? Uh, I mean, it sounds to me like, you know, there's been some confusion and they've appealed and they're two months late. And we've, I mean, we've replaced the property manager that was there, the company that was the property manager. Okay. And the new property manager obviously brought this to our attention, but at that point, we were behind the date in terms of when things could be applied for the exemption. So, okay, since uh, then, I, I, done. I understand, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, any, any discussion? Any questions from the board? Any discussion? Then I'll entertain a motion regarding this property. I'm moving that we accept the application is timely. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, sir, we've accepted this timely, so that means you, you're, it will qualify, all right? Okay, thank you very much for your time. All right. Have a good day. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, moving on to number seven and eight, that's you again, uh, Amanda. Do we yes, have sir. anybody here from True Homes or Dependable Homes? I no. Sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. These right. are, yep, so these are gonna, these are applications for the builder's inventory exemption. Um, so they do contain multiple parcels, as in um, several hundred parcels on each application um, to get a partial exemption on the improvements made um, because it is held by a builder. Um, these applications were submitted after January 31st. So we are requesting approval to accept the applications as timely, even though they were untimely. Okay. Did they give a reason as to why they were late? Uh, they switched accountants. Okay. And these are several properties. And you're, you're saying that you think that, I mean, do you think we should grant this exemption? Yes, sir. Okay. Because they're large companies and we're not usually as lenient with them, but because yeah. of the accountants? They're, 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 they're not, these are not going to be full exemptions. They're going to be partial exemptions on the improvement made. So, you know, if the land was already there, but they added a building last year, um, it might be an exemption on the building. It's just going to vary on every single property. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? Then I guess uh, any discussion? Then I'll entertain a motion on number seven and eight. I move that we accept the, that's timely. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to number nine. Andrea, are you, you here? He's here. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. There she is. I am here. Okay. Can we get your video, please? I'm trying. Give me just a second. Okay. You want to come <laughs> I don't have the option for this. 
Okay, I'm going to use Amanda's computer, but this is Andrea. Okay. All right, I need to get your in, please. If you raise your right hand, where or affirm the testimony you have to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing to help you, God. Yes. Speak your name and position, please. Andrea Williams, tax division, tax division manager. Okay. This is personal property. All right, and this is a property, um, various properties by Ryan. Is it Ryan Homes or what? Who's Ryan? No, Ryan is the tax representative that represents these uh, accounts. Well, is, is an owner here because we can't hear from a tax owner or an attorney. No, the owners would would not be here for these companies. Okay, so it's not. We're not going to have anybody uh, testify. No. Okay. All right. So what do you have for us on that? So on November the 19th, the county received notice that Brian wanted to appeal these accounts on behalf of their client. And that this was the initial contact that we had with them, but they only had 30 days to, to appeal the value. So we denied the, their appeal based off timeliness. We had an assessor's conference December the 16th, which they did not show up for, and they appealed the decision, the assessor's decision, which was to uphold the value, and that's we are here now. So based off the county's recommendation, we ask that you continue to, to uphold the value. You said they had 30 days. How late were they? Um, approximately two and a half months. Two and a half months later. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? That's it. Okay, any questions from the board? So you recommend that we uphold your back. Is that correct? Um, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, then I'll answer the motion regarding number nine. I move we uphold the county position. Have a second. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Okay. All right, then we're upholding. All right, let's move on to uh, number 10 and 11. All right. Is anybody going to show up for that as far as you know? I don't know. Well, it's scheduled for 10.50, so maybe we should take a little break and give it time to get here. So let, let's come back here at 10.50, okay? Okay. All right. See you all Thank there. You. What time, David? 10.50. 10.50?
Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you, Courtney. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Are you ready to start, Mr. Smith, or you want to wait till 10.50? Well, I was going to say let's wait for Tony, but she's there. <laughs> what about uh, Starling? What, is he? Let's give him just a few more minutes. Okay. I was about to say I was just talking to him. He should yeah. be there. There he is. <laughs> uh, I could hear what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We got Andrea, so I guess we got everybody we need. Okay, all right, let's move on to number 10 and 11. This is a penalty from uh, Cree Inc. Uh, do we have, I, I thought I saw somebody here from Cree. Yes. Meredith Rawls, correct? Hi, yes, my name's Meredith Rawls. I need to get you sworn in, please, if you will raise your right hand. I'm here as well with her also, so. Okay, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. And uh, Ms. Rawls, what is your position with Cree? I am a tax manager at Cree. Okay. And Mr. Faulkner, what's your association with Cree? We assist the Cree with their property taxes. So are you a tax representative? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. And I'm not going to, I don't need to uh, swear in Ms. Williams because she was sworn in in a previous case. So uh, Ms. Williams, if you'll start, please, and sort of lay the foundation for us. Good morning again. So Cree wishes to appeal the penalty only portion um, from an audit finding that was done for years 2014 and 2018. The penalties are a result of that audit discovery that was completed and mailed in November of 2020. Staff recommends that the total penalties of $38,488.76 remain on the account per North Carolina General Statute 105.312. What was discovered in the, uh, in the audit? It was, they had undiscovered or underlisted property for machinery, equipment, furniture, and fixtures. Yeah, machinery, equipment, furniture, and fixtures. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Rawls or Ms. Faulkner, whoever needs to present, please present your case. Hi, my name is Meredith Rawls, and I'm a tax manager at Cree, and I've been at Cree for eight years. So I have been at Cree over the entire audit period that we were there. Um, the audit findings from our entire audit were slightly under $100,000 and Cree Inc. pays Durham County over $5 million every year in um, property and real, personal property and real estate taxes. Um, so we felt that the audit findings were very minimal some of the findings that were in the audit, we had already subsequently taken care of in future um, years. We had noticed that, you know, it happened and we agreed with the findings. You will notice that we, we have already paid the findings as of March 2021 because we did agree um, with what was found. We feel as though the penalties are very steep for what we have. The penalties are almost $40,000, which is about 38% of the total findings of our audit. And we feel as though the timing of the audit was quite extended by the auditor. The audit began in August of 2018 and we were able to provide all the necessary documentation. The auditor came back with us in the summer of 2019, so a little less than a year later with their initial findings. Um, and we agreed to you know, have a little bit of back and forth and discussion on those findings. And Cree had submitted you know, our final offerings in fall of 2019, and then it took it took about a year for county tax services to come back to us, you know, with the final findings in August of 2020. So, you know, once those came through, we agreed to them, um, you know, shortly after, and they submitted those to Durham County in late 2020. Um, the bills were finally produced to us in, I believe it was January or February 2021, which, you know, subsequently added an extra year of penalties, even though 
the audit, you know, was finished in the prior year. Um, and Cree just respectfully asked that, you know, we waive those penalties, um, you know, due to our, our continued um, current payments that we make to the county on time um, and our record with the county. So which penalties are you asking to be waived? All of them or just one year? All of them. All of them. And so you agree with the, the audit's findings that some of these items weren't listed? We do. And uh, why, why weren't they listed? Um, some of them were very old assets um, dating back to 1998, 1999 placed in service that had just gotten lost in transit. And then other assets that were found um, related to software, which we um, we just misread how it should be treated. And, you know, those were the ones that I had mentioned we had already subsequently knew that there was, you know, we fixed the error on those. Okay. Ms. Williams, why did it take a, a year to, after you came up with the, uh, the missing items for them to be built? Cannot speak to the length of time that the audit took. Um, I can say this, that the original audit findings there was an assessed value between the two accounts of just over $15 million. That audit finding was completed in August of 2018. Um, she's correct, they did work with the auditor and there was a, a new value based off the information that they, they gave, which brought it down to $5,829. $5,829,000. I wasn't a part of the audit, unfortunately, so cannot speak to how long or, or why it took so long. I'm not privy to that information at this point, but um, the $100,000 that she's referring to is what the, the actual tax ended up being, but it was, it was $5 million, almost $6 million of value that had not been reported for all of those years. Yeah, so, I would say that again. So there was the value, the discovery, the cumulative discovery value was $5,829,168. There's the penalty is broken out over 10% 10, 10 for each year. And it's based on when the, the audit was finalized. So even if the bill was produced this year, because the audit was completed at that point, it would have been based off when the, the date the audit was complete, not when we submit the bills. We generally try not to send bills out after November 15th to give taxpayers time to pay. So if we had sent the bill November 21st versus January 7th, there would not have been a difference in that penalty. Okay. We don't assess the taxpayer extra penalty because we delayed them. Okay. All right. I, I would point out that the error rate in the listing values was less than 1% of our total values that were listed for those years. So we're dealing with an error rate in the audit of less than 1% of values listed. The numbers sound big, but the tax bills are really big. Um, so we've got an error rate on our side of less than 1%. Um, as Meredith pointed out, you know, we sent the, uh, first of all, when we received the audit findings, it was just a PDF with numbers. It did not detail any of the proposed changes. Um, any of that information, none of that information was in there. So we had to request the electronic work papers to see what changes were being made uh, as Ms. Williams pointed out, there was a significant difference between the original audit findings we received uh, and then what, what was ultimately agreed to. Um, one of our big frustrations is, as Meredith pointed out, we appealed this on June 20th of 2019. We did not receive any um, revised audit work papers until June 5th of 2020. So almost a year of delay um, in getting any sort of feedback or revised audit work papers from the auditor. Mm -hmm. Yet when we received the audit findings, which like I said, were in PDF format, did not detail any of the changes, we had 30 days to respond. Um, so we have an extra year on all these account of penalties based on the fact that the auditor sat on our appeal and the information we submitted for basically an entire year before we received any sort of feedback and then engaged in discussions. And as Mrs. Williams pointed out, we worked them down from like 15 or whatever million in, in um, you know, value difference to 
just a little over five, which is less than 1% of total values listed for all those years. Do you have a figure for how much the uh, that one year penalty would be? I didn't do that, Cap. Did you, Meredith? I, I did not. If you give me a second, I can do that. Hold on. Uh, any questions from the board while we're waiting? Are these penalties for, for four years for 18 plus 19 and 20? Is that what we're looking at? This is six years worth of penalties? It's 2014 through 2018. Only four years. Right. It's worth the penalties. Yep. Uh, Ms. Williams, can you also, do you have access to the last year's, one year's worth of the penalties? Just a moment. And, and while I'm looking up that information, so this audit was 14 through 18. And let, let's just start with 18 so that, because that was the most recent year. The audit findings were initially done in 2019. We all agree on that. At that point, it was two listing periods late. So the penalty for that was 20%. It did not change based on when the bill was created or the change in the audit. The penalty for 2018 is $2,618.52. So that was a 20% penalty for the so for that for that year, it'd be roughly $1,309. Was there if any it were 10%, but it, but it should never have been 10% because of when the initial audit was completed. Was there any penalty for 2020? No. So 2020 I, I, was not a part of this audit. Okay. So Mr. Faulkner, if there was no penalty for 2020, I'm not sure what you're what you're saying. Twenty twenty was a part of the audit. Twenty fourteen through eighteen were part of the audit. So are, is he being penalized for not paying in twenty twenty? No. So I mean you had the information in twenty nineteen and you're you're having to pay the penalty for that. So I'm not really sure why you're saying a delay costs you more money. Sorry, I'm doing a calculation. Twenty fourteen has a sixty percent penalty, which implies to me that it was penalized through twenty twenty. Um, we appealed this in twenty nineteen, okay. and we tried to wrap everything up. And that's where another year rolled through because we submitted the appeal, submitted made, submitted the um, information on for the appeal. And then we did not hear from the auditor for um, another year after that, which there therefore created another year on the penalties. Because if it was, that's not what the county is saying. So, all right. Well, let's move on to the board. Is any questions from the board? Any discussion? What I'm what I'm hearing from Cree is they're saying we have a huge amount, and so we missed a little bit, which doesn't really hold water with me. I'm sorry, Miss Rawls, but. Um, uh, it seems like you owe it. You owe it, even if it is just a, a small percentage of what you owe. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the rest of you all think. So the 38. $38,488. That's for five years of penalties yeah. on yeah. the $5 million worth of inventory. That was missed. Yes, Typically, Dave, the board, the board would... Uh, I've seen the board reduce that by 50% pretty much yeah, over the history of cases like these. I'm not sure if we take that position this time or not, but. Well, we, we vary, you know, usually if it's a small company, 
and they yeah, go good. forward with it, we'll say, yeah, we, we need some relief. Uh, but you, know, you got a large company like this, they, they should know, I, I would think, okay. uh, that they would, would know that. I mean, I, I, I don't know. We could reduce it a little bit if you feel more comfortable. No, I, I, I would just, I would just recalling, you know, how we've found some, some, some of the issues in, in the past, but it, okay. Well, let's see what you're saying. I mean, what, what do you think, Jeanette and Tony? Tony, where are you at, Tony? I, I feel like, you know, if, if, there's an, if there's someone doing accounting, this is part of accounting, you know? I feel like if we, if we have um, made a, a, a reduction in the past, it's been when, you know, a private citizen came forward. Okay. Um, you know, and just didn't have the help of a professional. Okay. All right. Jeanette, what do you think? Well, I mean, like you say, I, it is a, a big company that does have people who are to take care of these issues. And, you know, if you look at five years to 38,000, that's 70, less than $7,700 a year uh, extra that they've now got to pay, but they've also had five years they didn't have to pay it. <laughs> But actually, it's seven years now, <laughs> so I, I'm inclined that the penalty remain. Okay. And I'll entertain a motion regarding this matter. This is numbers ten and eleven. I make a motion that we uh, stick with the uh, county's decision. Do I have a second? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. But we uphold the county's penalty. Okay, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, Faulkner, may I have your first name? I'm sorry. No. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, all right. Uh, anything else you have for us, Courtney? When's our next meeting schedule? I do have some, actually. Um, we would like to, um, for you all to please go back to um, agenda item number five. Yes. Um, so we can rediscuss that because we're thinking that maybe it wasn't clear what Daryl um, wanted from you all. Okay. Um, and also the taxpayer didn't receive a notice. Um, so they didn't get a chance to come before you all and kind of explain their side of the story because we were treating it like how we do the exemption denials. Okay. Um, so Daryl would like to, him and Starling would like to talk to you all about it, if that's okay. Okay. Sterling, you're, you're muted. Okay. Uh, this is Daryl's first time, and he really didn't quite have the full grasp of how to do what he really wanted to do. So, Daryl, go ahead and tell them, let, let them know what, you re what we really want out of this, because this is the program that the county commissioners uh, wanted to develop to actually help people in this particular situation. Daryl, kind of give a little background of what we, of why it may have been a little late and why it was so difficult in dealing with this yeah. particular taxpayer. Yeah, without going into Mr. Clark's privacy issues and everything, um, his disabilities um, are probably the factor of why the application was late. Um, and like um, he said, um, really the county does, they created this program to help people like Mr. Clark retain their homes um, and, and prevent them from being foreclosed on or enforced on as far as um, you know, delinquent collections. Um, the county really does want to help people like Mr. Clark. And um, I really think that you know, the county wants to help people like him and, and would like this application approved. Well, even it is though new, it was late. It is a new program, so I understand why people wouldn't understand it. Right. Um, okay, all right, well, I'll open it up for discussion. Uh, from, from is this all. program, is it, de is it deferred for the taxes? The, is that with interest that they'll be paying? I mean, yes. I Yes, there is interest that will accrue on the account that needs to be paid whenever um, the taxpayer pays it within that 10 years or at the 10 years. 
um, a fund was being created and the county um, is working with nonprofit agencies to help people um, at the end game of paying these taxes to help with defray some of the interest costs to that. Um, and we have had donations to that because we had a um, uh, check box on our bills that went out this year, for 2020 asking if people wanted to donate to that. And we have received money on that to help defray the interest cost at 10 years for people like Mr. Clark that are in this program. So, um, you know, hopefully there will be enough money in that um, at the end game of 10 years to help everybody. Uh, we just don't know how much money will be in there at the end game and how many um, people will actually take advantage of the program. Um, we had a lot of applications to this. Well, I'm not going to say a lot, maybe less than 10, um, but that's pretty good for a first year. And we only had one that was approved. So we only have one person approved um, for the program for 2020. Um, I think the program will be a little bit um, bigger this year with the applicants because of the economy the way it is and uh, people earn less income last year um, and more may qualify for the program this year where they might not have um, in 2020. Um, but the county is in favor of approving this to help him and help others like him. And that's why the program was created. What are the requirements? What's the income level? And is, are there any other restrictions? Um, the income level is based on 30% uh, of AMI. Um, let me pull up this uh, application. Give me one second here. And the qualifications change each year, uh, just like the others. That um, for, for a one-person household, um, the 30% of AMI for 2020 was 19,100. And then it would go up depending on how many people are in the household. And um, this year, it of course changed, um, but he is way under the one person income of 19,100. Are there any other restrictions as far as how long? Um, yeah, the, um, they have to have been in the home uh, for 10 years as the owner. And his, his mom um, deeded the house to him a long time ago in her wheel um, when she passed away. Okay. Because, yeah, I understand this is the county's trying to help because the circuit breaker income is so low. Mm -hmm. I know yeah, it's very, very similar to that. Um, basically, it doesn't have the any age requirements on it, but the 10 year ownership and it has to be primary residence and everything it can't be a rental house or anything like that. Okay. All right. Well, what's the, the pleasure of the board? Do you want to reopen this case or are you all comfortable with the decision we already made? We can reopen. I make a motion. We reopen the case. I second, and I second it. Okay. All right. Any discussion, further discussion on this one? Okay. Then I will entertain a new motion. I move that we uphold the county's position and approve. What you mean, uh, allow? Well, you were saying they really wanted. Accepted as time. Is that what your motion yes. is? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Um, one thing, and I don't know if this is going to work with you all, but can, can we move the date at some point to Wednesdays instead of Tuesdays and Thursdays? Is that, first of Courtney, is that something you all can do? It's fine with me um, if it works out for everybody else. What about the board? Uh, is okay. Wednesday's any a problem? Fine. No, no. I, I well, see that, I that are on Tuesdays and Thursdays that always conflict with this. Uh -huh. So are Wednesdays okay with you, David? Yeah. And Tony? I can't do next Wednesday, but I can... I can do it after that. Overall, okay, all right. Okay, well, the, uh, that would help me out if you all could do Wednesdays instead. Now, I understand we okay. probably already got one scheduled for the next one that we court. And when's our next meeting? We were supposed to just do um, every Tuesday if we have enough appeals. But right now, we only have like one or two. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Okay, so we can start with our next meeting on Wednesday instead. Okay, sounds good. Okay, all right, thank you all. All right. All right. Anything Thank else, you. Courtney? No, I don't have anything else. Starland, do you have anything? 
No, and I'll check and make sure that we don't need to advertise or change the date or anything of that nature. Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything else? All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Have a great day.